What is up, everybody? Craig Severson here with Brightworks Training, and we're going to be diving in to using my business as a case study to help you see what were the three secrets that helped me just explode my business and get to those 30K months and beyond. And uh, hopefully we're going to extract some of the lessons I learned the hard way so that you can apply them in your business and get similar results. Dulls. These are all the same things I teach my clients. I'm not holding back and uh, I'm really excited. I've got here like five pages of notes that I want to get through. And um, speaking of these notes, if you want a copy of my notes, all you have to do is comment notes into the comments and uh, we'll connect and send those over to you so that you can see all the stuff we're going to go over in PDF glory, right? So comment notes if you want to copy that, but we're going to dive in. This is going to be really super valuable. I'd love to hear from you. Give me a heart and a like. Let me know that you're there. Uh, let me know where you're watching from. Always glad to hear that and see where you guys are watching from. And uh, I'm really excited to dive into this because this is the stuff that is going to really set the stage for you to grow your business as big as you want. You know, I kind of said in the description, if you read it, that this is what helped me beat that feast or famine cycle. And that feast or famine cycle, you may be familiar with it, is where you've got clients one month and none the next. And uh, it's really a, a vicious cycle that we fall into, but it is 100% beatable when you start getting the right mindsets and taking the right actions. So let's dive into these three secrets that took my business to 30K months and beyond. So secret number one, and these are writer downers or just comment notes, and then uh, I'll send you the notes and then you don't have to write them down, right? So you don't have to worry about capturing notes. But I would encourage you, you're gonna have ahas, so grab a pen and paper and uh, be ready to capture those ahas as we go through. And also, you know, put them in the chat. I'd love to hear what your ahas are and what uh, what you're getting, what your big takeaways are. Okay, so secret number one was to get one defined core offer, and this is especially true if you're still doing proposals and you know every client is custom. This is going to be super important to you. I know it was for me. So why this matters when you don't have a core offer? It's really difficult to build momentum and to build your reputation. It's hard to receive referrals. People know, don't know how to refer you. They don't know, you know, you're doing different stuff for different people. So they're not sure what are the triggers that need to be in place in order to make a referral to you. Um, you're unable to set and reach sales goals because it's like every client's getting a different service. Every client's getting a different amount of money. It's hard to set sales goals because you're not sure how many people you have to reach out to. And then there's also no consistency to your results because you're working with different clients on a ton of different projects. So it causes a bunch of problems when you don't have that core offer. So when I when I understood that and I developed my own core offer, I, I realized that there's a lot of benefits to having one core main offer. That doesn't mean you can't have other offers, but having one main core offer. And uh, here are just a few. One, you're able to fine tune your market marketing and get consistent income. When you have one core offer, you get consistent and fine tune that marketing message and that marketing so that you start getting more momentum, more results, right? You can train others to help you sell and to help you market, right? So you can actually build a team, get yourself out of being that bottleneck, right? And get some more people in. You can build your reputation and momentum around a particular offer, a particular result. That's how you start setting yourself apart as a thought leader in your industry. You start owning you know, a certain core offer. That doesn't mean that you can't be an expert in a lot of different things. It means that we're positioning ourselves properly in the marketplace to build momentum, right? Um, you can collect testimonials and generate referrals with ease. You know, a, a lot of us get started because we get these referrals from different places, but they're hard to maintain. When you get one core offer, you can start getting testimonials around that offer and you can start soliciting referrals so that it's not just organic, it's something that you can actually control and that's going to give you a little bit more consistency to your business. It's a really cool thing. And you, ha you have to have a core offer if you want to start doing that. And then the last thing here is you can focus your services to build your team and again, get out of that day to day. It's not just building team around sales, it's building team around marketing, building team around actually service delivery, right? All of that stuff are more possible. Is that how you would say that? It's more possible to do that uh, when you have a core offer because when you're doing custom work for everybody, you're the secret sauce, you're the magic. You can't be, it's hard to bottle that. 
But when you start working with very similar clients, doing very similar things, driving very similar results, now you can start to build systems and processes and you can train people to implement those systems and processes and you start to get out of the day-to-day -day of your business. It's a cool, it's a beautiful thing. Having that core offer is foundational to building momentum and scaling your business. Having that core offer is foundational to building sales momentum and scaling your business. Important enough that I said it twice, right? You really want that core offer so you can start getting that momentum going, right? So what am I telling you to do? Essentially what I'm saying is that you wanna pare down your offerings into one core offer. And I've got one, two, three criteria of how you want to develop this core offer. So number one, you want it to be packaged over a period of time, right? So when we talk about having a core offer, you know, last time I'll say, you know, what's your package? What's your offer? Because we want it to package over, you know, three months, six months, a year. And the reason we do that is because it's easier to sell into that mindset. And it also takes your service from being a monthly expense into being an investment for a result. It shifts the conversation right? So that you can retain your clients easier and you can sell them easier. So we want it to be over a period of time. So no more selling one-off projects that don't really get good results because it's just a one-off project, right? We really want to be uh, working with people on a longer term basis. And that's going to allow you the bandwidth to be a top service provider in your industry. Really, that's, that, that's key, right? We really want you to be number one, the best service provider in your industry. You need time and to work with people so that you can get real results so that you can get that uh, that kind of level, right? Two, it needs to be irresistible to your ideal client. You wanna ensure that you're selling the candy and not the medicine, what does that mean? Everyone wants to buy candy, but because we know our services so well, we tend to try and sell the medicine, right? That's like saying, you know, someone's coming to you that's saying, ah, I want more clients. And you're like, well, to get more clients, you gotta work on your offer, so let's do your offer. Okay, that's true, that's true, but the thing is, is that they're not looking to fine tune their offer. They're looking to get clients. So you got to sell them. Okay, let's get more clients. And then once they buy in, you say, okay, first thing we're going to do is look at your offer, <laughs> right? We're giving the medicine, selling the candy. So what is the candy that people are looking for in your niche, in your audience, in your tribe? And we want to lead with that. We That's how you make an irresistible offer, right? Is that you really lean into what are they already looking for and lead with that and build the medicine in, the stuff you know they need in order to succeed, build that into your package so that they get it when they buy the candy. That's the way you do it, right? Don't. But we tend to go the other way. We tend to try to sell the medicine instead of the candy and no one wants to buy the medicine, they just don't. Uh, number three here, we want it to be extremely valuable to 90% of your audience. In other words, when you look at your tribe, you look at your audience, what is the thing that 90% of them want or need? right? That's what we want to lead with. If it's something that like not everybody needs, then it's not going to work, right? So it's got to be something that the majority of your audience is going to be like, yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And then you get them in on that, right? Um, and, and what that's going to allow you to do is actually position your services so that you can say, okay, your goals are X. Here's how my package helps you reach those goals, right? Now, all of that, when we combine all three of those things, what does it also help you do? There's one more bonus thing here that that was going to help you do. You're positioning yourself in the marketplace as a strategic partner, not just a service provider. And when you do that, you can raise your rates. Probably if you're charging, you know, hourly rates, you could probably double or triple your rates and still beat the competition because you're positioning yourself differently. That, you know, sometimes we call this premium pricing, but I feel like that's gotten watered down. It's gotten like, you know, uh, very, when you say premium pricing, you get a lot of thoughts that come into your head. But really what we want to do is charge at a rate that you can spend time to really drive results. You can spend time to be a strategic partner. And by positioning yourself properly, you can have that. So you're going to make more money per clients. So you're going to get better clients. And then you're going to drive real results for them, which is just going to compound and grow. <laughs> Your business will just, you know, catch on fire that way. So how did I use this? I used this in a way, I just simply sat down. Like when I started doing this, I simply sat down and looked at what was I doing for all of my clients and what was the uh, majority of what was what was being purchased, right? What was the majority of my, my work? And what I realized is that there were some differences in people 
but at 90%, you know, and when I say 90%, uh, the majority, right? Like almost everybody, I don't, I didn't do the math and figure out, oh, 90%, but like a lot of people, almost everybody was getting very, very similar services right now. Uh, and then the other thing I realized is that those that were like deviating from the norm, um, they only did that because that's what was on their mind. And if I could have said, hey, you know, let's actually do this because this works for X, Y, Z reason, they probably would have been perfectly okay with it. You know, it's like when your clients come to you and they're like, you, maybe you're a copywriter or something, or you're a, you're a branding strategist or something like that. And they're like, hey, I want X thing. And you're like, well, you can get the same result with Y thing and uh, it's a lot more compelling. Um, they might just say, oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's do Y. I was only doing X because I saw an ad for it or because I was thinking about it, but you're right. Y seems like it's going to make a lot more sense. And so you can kind of step into a leadership role with your potential clients and guide them to those things that are going to make the most sense. And when you start really fine tuning your package like this, people will start coming to you because you're developing an expertise around a certain methodology, right? So when I did that, this gave me more confidence in my offer. I was able to really be more confident about what I was selling. It gave me a baseline for what was custom and what was standard. You know, when you're doing custom work for everybody, there's no baseline for that. You know, your chart, that's just your normal rates. But when you have a standard, this is what I do, then now you have a baseline for like, okay, if I do something different, it's going to be custom work and it's going to be, it's going to be more money, right? So like using that, it gave you a, ba it gave, gave me a baseline for that. Um, and then number three is it helped me focus on what I was selling and it helped me focus on who I was selling it to. And all of that gave me momentum in my marketing and momentum in my sales. And at the same time, I was able to sell something really valuable for what it was worth. You know, no, not haggling over prices and not haggling over like, you know, how much is it? No, like I could really step into a, a position of leadership and authority and sell something with a good price tag that was a win-win for me and for my client, right? They got a ton of value. I got the money I needed to grow my business, right? Very cool. So imagine if you had that core offer, you know, the same thing. If you we could take all of your offers that you're making and take it down to one core offer that you could build momentum around that. You could really dial in, who is this for? How do I get the results? Maybe even like develop the systems to start hiring people to help you perform it. How would that change your business? It is foundational for rapid reven revenue, for rapidly growing your business. Really, really important stuff. Okay, so that was secret number one, was one core offer. Secret number two, focus marketing effort using social media. So uh, this is kind of a twofer, right? Because focusing my marketing effort and I happen to choose social media. So I'm gonna talk about social media because this is what I did and this was a case study about my business, but um, really it could be different for you. And, and I'll go into that a, a little bit. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you're just jumping in, um, you know, grab the notes for this. I've got all of my notes in front of me that I'm reading from to keep me on track here. If you want to copy these notes, all you have to do is comment notes and I'll get you a copy of everything we're talking about so that you don't have to lose your spot, you know, frantically taking notes. Okay, so uh, subject, secret number two, focus marketing efforts using social media. So the number one issue I had, and I see this with my clients all the time, is that we don't commit to our marketing. I wasn't committed to my marketing. I was bouncing around from idea to idea, right? That's not 100% true. I was very successful using digital presentations. You know, sometimes we call them webinars, but I wasn't following the traditional webinar strategy. So I'm calling it digital presentations because it's different. It's not, you know, the build a funnel and hope people come. It, it was a, it was a lot like a speaking tactic, but doing it digitally online. Uh, so I was getting on digital stages, not on real stages. And I, I was really committed to that right? But with everything else, I wasn't really focused or committed. And so what was happening was that I was bouncing from tactic to tactic. And in hindsight, what was really going on was that I would switch tactics right before tactics started getting me results. So I was getting really frustrated because I was like, none of these tactics are working. Well, they were, I just wasn't working them long enough, or I wasn't dedicated enough to them in order to get the results that I wanted. And then number two is that I wasn't I was not developing mastery in any of them, right? Like because I bounced around, I didn't develop any mastery. And if you look at any successful entrepreneur, you're going to see that they've probably been doing some form of their marketing tactic for a very long time, 
right? That's just kind of the way it goes. We build momentum and mastery over this. So, you know, the marketplace shifts, market, market, t marketing tactics shift, but really marketing is cyclical. You know, the principles that we work on today for marketing are the same principles they worked on for marketing 50 years ago. They just have different names, right? Like organic social media is a lot like networking, right? And networking is like an age old marketing tactic, right? Uh, digital presenting, I was just talking about that. It's a lot like speaking, right? Which is an older marketing tactic. They're all cyclical, but they, they adjust and they change and they shift. So what you do is you've got to commit and develop mastery over your marketing tactics. And then what happens is as those shift and change, you know, you shift and change with it, but the core mastery behind it allows you to actually do it better than anyone else. You know, it's like, it's like, um, you know, Jeff Walker, the launch guy, right? Like he does this launch. It's basically a video sales letter or even like a, an in-person event, right? He just does it in videos. Well, because he's mastered it, he's able to stay on top of this. And now he's doing like these live launches, right? He's able to stay on top of it because he's developed mastery over that marketing tactic. So you too have to develop mastery over your marketing tactics. You know, you don't have to sell the marketing tactic that you use, but you, you, sh you just have to develop mastery over it, right? The number two issue that I personally had, I kind of said this, I was using digital presenting. And so I was getting these big bursts of clients. So I'd go like, I'd have this great weekend or this great week where I did a presentation. I'd sell like, you know, 30 to a hundred thousand dollars in sales. Woohoo. Awesome. Really excited. But then I'd go like, three, six, 12 weeks without hitting another presentation. So my sales were really, really inconsistent, right? I was getting this really big burst of sales, which were great. They were keeping me afloat. They were growing my business, but well, they were keeping me uh, at, a, at a level in my business, but to grow, I was having a real hard time getting consistent, right? And so I needed to add something in that gave me that consistency, which is why I went with using social media, Facebook and LinkedIn, because those were able, they gave me the ability to nurture my clients, nurture my audience and, uh, and build that consistency in sales into my business. So, um, and I'm still using that, that tactic today. In fact, it's a big part of uh, my coaching and consulting program, the Land More Clients Intensive. That's my 90 day program, the Land More Clients Intensive. And in that program, we teach all about how to use an organic social media method that feels natural, feels great. You know, and this is what I still use today. So it's all about building your audience and using great content to engage them. And then combining that with also having real conversations with people. And those conversations lots of times lead to sales opportunities, not always, you know, and you don't have to be salesy or pushy. I'm not. And uh, they will lead to sales opportunities. It's just about having the right mindset and a consistent strategy. Again, it's that mastery idea, right? So um, really, I've dialed that in so that I'm getting amazing results. My clients are getting amazing results. And you combine that with a strategy that builds your brand. You know, view it this way, you know, using social media to nurture your audience, to get some consistent sales. You know, you're getting one, two sales a week. You're getting really consistent on that sales. And then you've got something like a brand building like digital presentation where you're getting these big hits in terms of growth to your list. You're getting these big hits in terms of influx of clients. And you just have this one, two punch of like building audience nurturing audience, building audience, nurturing audience. And it's going to give you consistency and momentum in your marketing. And that is what I have experienced. And that is why it is secret number two, focus your marketing. And for me, it was adding organic social media because I was already working that digital presentation, you know, but I could actually, as I'm talking about it, say, Hey, you know, I focused on both of those. I, I dedicated myself, committed to both of those. And that was, that was killer. It was really, really key. So no pressure with the organic social media, no sleazy sales tactics, just value and relationship building. I know uh, I know that as social media gets more popular, there's a lot of people being really, really pushy. And let's be honest, the number game, especially LinkedIn, if you're on LinkedIn, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, the numbers game does work, but it doesn't always feel in alignment. I'm really a bigger proponent of let's provide a ton of value. And people are going to raise their hand and say, hey, I'm interested in what you're talking about, and that's gonna lead to sales opportunities. That feels so much more in alignment to me, that feels so much better, and you're you're not gonna feel pushy or sleazy or slimy or 
anything like that. So imagine you had, you know, a similar thing, a proven process like, like digital presenting and social media, and you were working them, you were dedicated to them, you were mastering them, and you were getting these clients on a consistent basis. Again, you know, it's almost like the core offer. When you focus your marketing, you can start to build systems around it. Oh man, now you can start to hire people. You can start to delegate. You can start to work the system. And that's how you start getting that momentum in your business. Really, really cool. Uh, so, uh, you know, bottom line here, if you're intentional with your marketing, it can have really big results on your business. And again, I'm looking down at my notes. So if you haven't typed notes in the comments yet, let's get it typed in there so that I can get you a copy of these because I'm looking down at the, them for reference. Um, and so if you're liking what you're hearing and you want to see it, you know, I, I'm happy to give those to you. Okay. Secret number three, use sales to empower your clients. Okay. So number one was core offer. Number two is focus your marketing. And for me, it was organic social media. Number three was use sale is use sales to empower your clients. Lots of us have an adversarial view of sales. One person win, one person loses, right? Either you give me your money and I win, or you keep your money and you win. That is the wrong view to have of sales. And when you have that view, it feels sleazy, it feels slimy, it feels icky, it feels whatever you know negative feeling you have around sales is probably because your mindset around sales is in the wrong place. And so what I started doing, what really made the shift for me was that if I could approach sales from a viewpoint of I am their partner, I am a leader in the space, I know how to get where they wanna go, right? They have a goal they want, I know how to get there and I'm in a position to help them get clarity and empower them to make a decision. And whether or not that decision is to hire me is irrelevant. You know, it, it starts to make more sense because if, it, well, I'll talk more about that in, in a second. I was about to get ahead of myself, but I'm going to hold my tongue. So, you know, this is a different way to approach sales. Be a leader, right, for your potential client. Provide massive clarity and value up front in that call, in your sales, and ultimately empower them to make a decision that serves them best. When you start having that mindset around sales, bam, your whole sales approach shifts and sales starts to feel really good to you. And you can start really stepping in there with more confidence and start really bringing in those clients on a much bigger stage. It's a really cool feeling. So, so you're going to you know, find that your calls are more enjoyable, more effective and more valuable, which is really, really cool. But the trick to do this is threefold. And this is what I was going to say that I was gonna getting ahead of myself. So there's three tricks to making sure that this works. Number one, you need to make sure that you're getting on the call with the right people. If you are getting, if your marketing is attracting the wrong people, then this sales approach isn't going to work. You have to be getting on the call with potential clients. So that's number one is you have to do the stuff we talked about in the marketing section to really make sure you're getting on the phone with the right people. Number two, you want to follow a set methodology. You want to have a system, a process to hosting a sales call. That's gonna give you a ability to improve because you're gonna know, hey, did I follow my process or not? Is the process working or not? Do I need to adjust the process, right? You're going to be able to improve and measure the effectiveness of it and build your confidence when you start following a set process. And I've got one, I call it the conversations that sell method. It's based on uh, the gap method, you know, and it's, it's just really an empowering approach to sales. Um, and then the third thing is you need to have the right mindset, right? Sales are not adversarial. Your job is to figure out what are their goals, help them get clarity around that, and then what is the best best pathway to get those goals? And if you're on the phone with the right person, then it's going to make logical sense that they hire you to help you help them reach their goals. You're empowering them to make that decision. If there's a legitimate reason why you shouldn't work together, you don't wanna manipulate them into being your client. That's just gonna result in bad clients, right? You're not gonna love them. So don't do it, right? Let's not manipulate them into becoming a client. Instead, let's empower them to make a decision that's best for them. And if it's the right person, nine times out of 10, hiring you is the right answer. And if you go through that process of empowering them, of gaining clarity, of gaining direction, then the sale portion of it becomes just an, an easy no brainer. It becomes really enjoyable because they're like, yeah, let's do this. I can see the benefit. I can see the ROI. Here's my credit card. Let's get moving, right? They're on top of it. They love it. And you're going to love it too. So that's the way I set up my own business. The way I use this is I actually just based my sales process around a sales 
consultation. So whenever somebody comes and they're interested in my services, I jump on the phone with them. And what I love about that, you know, there's some pre-qualification in my marketing, right? To make sure that they're the right fit. But what I love about getting on the phone with them is that you can actually tell, you know, <laughs> you can vet crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> or you can vet, you know, is this someone I even want to work with? And uh, in in my line, and I'm sure in yours too, I work so closely with people that I don't really want to let just anybody in. Like I have a high standard for who works with me. And so I want to get on the phone and talk with them. But the cool thing is, is that because there's a process, I could train someone else to do this and take it over for me, right? So eventually as my business grows, as my momentum grows and I no longer need to be the person on the phone, which right now I'm holding on to it because I like it, um, I, I, I can train on that and I can delegate it and I can get similar results from it because I have a system that I'm measuring, that I'm watching, that I'm working, right? Very cool. Imagine if you had that similar process, how would things shift for you if you had a sales process that works like mine, right? Where it's all about empowerment. It's really valuable up front. You know, that's the coolest thing is that there's so much value in my sales call that when people purchase, there's immediately ROI, there's immediately a, a value return because they get so much clarity and direction in that first call that it's like, bam, I've already, I'm already going to take action. And for me, you know, it might be different for you, but for me, what that results in is people usually get clients within the first like week or first couple of days of working with me because we get so much clarity and so much focus that they take that and turn that into action that results in getting clients really, really quickly. So that's a really cool subset of having a really valuable sales process is that it's gonna actually drive results for your clients really, really quickly. And you're gonna get better clients, right? No more bottom of the barrel clients. We're gonna get the cream of the crop. Awesome, guys. So those are the three secrets that took my business to 30K months and beyond. And they were threefold. One, we had a defined core offer. Two, I focus my marketing efforts using social media. And number three, I use sales to empower my clients. And bottom line is getting these key components in place in your business is gonna help you both long-term and short-term, right? Like it is the solution for both of them. Short-term, clients coming in the door now. Long-term, you're setting the base for systems, for scaling, for delegation, to getting yourself out of your business. You, you know, if you wanna build your business, long term, the best way is to have an options model, like right? set yourself up as a CEO, because if you can build a team and systems that drive results, you have options, you could sell that business, right? What would it be like to take like a five or $10 million buyout because you've built a profitable business? That's awesome right? Your other option would be you could actually establish a board, you could become chairman of the board and install a CEO. Now your business is something you own, not something you're working in. That's pretty cool. Or number three, you could continue working it as a CEO, but you're going to have a ton of uh, ability to take vacation to, you know, because your business is profitable and runs without you being the bottleneck. So there's a lot of options there. You know, that's an options uh, strategy. Very, very cool thing to have inside your business. Okay, guys, that's what I got for you. Comment notes if you want the notes from this presentation. Let me know what your biggest takeaways, your biggest ahas are. And until next time, take some fast focus, imperfect action. I believe in you. I got you back. We'll talk soon. See ya.